Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. It is 4 a.m. And you might be wondering, Dark Logos, why are you recording in the depths of the night? Uh, well, A, because uh, I can. And uh, B, uh, I've worked, I think, about five days straight at Target and standing up on concrete for about eight and a half hours uh, constantly for those days has sort of worn on me. I came home, I kid you not, at 4.30, said I was going to take a nap around 6. Took an, I, I was dozing off so many times before I said I was going to take that nap. I decided around like 6, uh, about 5.30, I would like go take a nap. I go to sleep. And I don't wake up until about 12.31 in the morning. So, yeah. That that sort of tells you. Uh, if, if anyone says, like, man, you know, those, those retail jobs, that's an easy job. No, not when Call of Duty comes out. That's, yeah, pretty much I couldn't do most of what I, I wanted to do because <laughs> Call of Duty came out and I kept getting weighed down. Anyway... So, you might be saying, Dark Logos, what are we going to talk about today? What's the interesting meta chewy goodness that we're going to get into since everything's rebooted now? Uh, since the, the grand infinite crisis has concluded and we have a new meta universe, I think it's time for us to reevaluate some elements. I've, I've waxed eloquent on uh, team bases in the past, I've talked on resource styles. Uh, now it's time for us to look at what we're going to be using 90% of the time, uh, everything else. Uh, <laughs> and I know that sounds a little lame, but that's pretty much it. Uh, in having a great conversation with my man, uh, Silent Scream, uh, I've come to the conclusion that now is the time for us to relook at promotions. And the, the main reason that we're looking at figures that promote is that most of the figures that promote shortcomings is their attack. Like, for example, when you go to uh, DC 10th and you look at Alan Scott Green Lantern and then you promote him into uh, just Hal, which is, oh gosh, Hal is so crappy. But why, why is Hal crappy? Because his attack is crappy, mainly. His, his, his abilities and everything else gives him a lot more versatility than, than Alan Scott. But you're sort of left with a lot of limitations. So uh, the best thing I, I would sort of come back in and say, like, all right, so how do we update that? Well, we use the Book of the Skull. We can use the, the Phoenix Force. Um, we have some options. But the, the main meta thought that sort of comes in is, if I have a force and I'm looking to keep this aggro wheel going, how can I keep this aggro wheel going in a different way? And uh, I, I know my mindset as a player is very defensive. And so it's taking me some time to like rework some offense into it. Even, even in me, I'm like, oh gosh, turning that gear is so hard. Because I like to sort of say, power up, Kamehameha, bam, you know, it's dead. Or, uh, you know, Thor, hammer smash to the face. You know, that's, that's sort of like my, my, my intent. That is where I, I flow from. So I, I think this is going to be just as much of a learning process for me as it is for you. As we sort of go through and we start looking at, you know, these other elements. But we're mainly going to focus on promotion. Again, you, you might say, well, hey, you know, where, where do we start and, and why are we and, and more so why are we specifically looking at promotions? Um, yeah, you know, characters that, you know, promote, you know, whatever you promote into can be a lot better. So let's let's look at some elements that sort of popped up. A. When we look at team bases, what's one of their distinct advantages? The ability to just bring a character out of nowhere and gain more point advantage in their build. What's the advantage of characters that are able to bring other additional characters outside the game? 
same thing is is adding point advantage and figure advantage when we're looking at promotion we're looking at the same element we're not necessarily looking at figure advantage but we are looking at point advantage so we're bringing in something additional that's less points I mean but that's more points uh, so that we can gain a, an additional advantage now there are some promotions that you know, no matter how you, you look at it, you, you are polishing a piece of poo. But you you can sort of at least light it on fire and it can turn into something interesting um, for your own amusement. And that's that's another thing to think about. So what, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to go back to, I wouldn't say where promotions began, but actually, yeah, no, this isn't where promotions began. Promotions began like... Um, brave and the bold but we're gonna look at where it was done right um, and how that still affects you okay so the the first character we're gonna go I'm gonna start at Marvel 10th and I'm gonna to go to DC 10th um, and, and, the, and the main reason I'm gonna do that is just that some of the more keyer figures that I want to talk about are in Marvel 10th and a lot of more meta impacting figures I feel are in Marvel 10th and more so than DC 10 for the direction I'm going in this show and and we'll get into some other elements later but mainly we're going to be looking at Marvel 10 first then DC 10 and then to some other elements okay uh, just giving you a brief roadmap so you 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 know where we're going alright first off we look at Captain America this Captain America is pretty good pretty solid cheap attacker pretty much is going to fill in for your Avengers team when we look at what we promote uh, Captain America to, uh, we get a scroll version, and we get scrolls shape change. Sorry, we get scrolls, we get Avengers uh, uh, TA. So we get both of those TA. So that's adding more defense. We're adding about 30 more points on top of, actually like 33 more points, something around like that, on top of what we already have. Then we're, we're going from like a melee character into more of a running shot character, which has its own advantages. Uh, we have cool indomitable uh, on our dial, and we don't really have that uh, on our uh, starting Captain America. Yes, we do lose Avengers Initiative, which is really strong uh, in certain circumstances, but we definitely gain that range. Uh, that will give us a distinct advantage in the future. One of the other things that's sort of cool about uh, Captain America is that he can get leadership and shape change on his first two clicks and then on his last click. So we're stacking shape change on top of scrolls. Um, and yes, he has other things. It's like, hey, if you have more scrolls, this is what you get. But we're, we're really not going to look at that. And and I know you're going to say, well, Dark Logos, doesn't that mean that we're overcosted and we're overpaying for this? Yes, we would be overpaying for, for that character if we didn't have more scrolls. But since we are promoting into him, it it's sort of like icing on the cake. If you happen to have Avenger scrolls, okay, you know, good for you. All right, so why am I starting with, with Captain America? Well, it's not just because he's number one, but it's also for the fact that he, he comes in cheap. 63 points, you can look at him for any team. Uh, you can even take this mindset a step further and say, hey, I need a cheap uh, melee tie-up uh, character that's going to help me uh, do wild card abuse. This Captain America helps you fill that role. Now, the added advantage is, hey, I can possibly promote into scroll uh, Captain America. All right. So you have you have to look at it like that as well. All right. So the the next character that we're going to look at is that Hulk. And I had someone uh, silent screen brought this up to me. He's like, you know, that Hulk can be pretty awesome. And I was like, man, that Hulk sucks. But once you give Hulk a hammer. Okay, uh, any charge, charge, plasticity, whatever. That Hulk all of a sudden starts becoming scary, and he starts becoming scary from jump. And here's why: he has charge, he'll have a ten attack, fifteen defense, and one damage. And it just says when he hits, he doesn't have to deal damage; he just has to hit. So your your opponent can, you know, absorb all your damage and whatnot. That's fine. It, we don't care about that. It's the moment that you hit, you start adding tokens. 
All right. Now, now, why is this Hulk such a scary thing? Well, the fact is that if you play him the most of the game as sort of a backup melee or your secondary attacker, uh, and, and definitely in larger point games where there's other things that seem like less, uh, that seem more scarier than him. Once he racks up his tokens, he's just like, oh, oh, I, I happened uh, to to roll what I needed. Bring out World Breaker, and and so this is a nice, easy way of getting World Breaker Hulk out there. Okay, so that's and and now think about this, and when we go and scroll down to World Breaker. And the potential here is just even if we say we get like weak world breaker and we have a hammer now. All right. We'll have a hammer. So we'll have charge and let's say we'll have charge and plasticity or something like that. Um, we have charge. We already have charge. when We go into world breaker. We'll have a 13 attack. We'll have impervious. We'll have five damage. OK. Uh, not only that. Uh, let's see. He gets world breaker can use charge and plasticity. Well. So that hammer will be a little overlapping, just mainly for a stat mod. When World Breaker is hit with a ranged combat attack, after action resolve, you may place him in a square adjacent to the attacker. Um, so that's pretty cool. And also, you think you're smart like Banner, World Breaker. Uh, when World Breaker is the target of any opponent's outwit or perplex, roll a d6 that can't be rerolled. On a 4 through 6, he ignores uh, that use of outwit and perplex. Um, and also, you have traded shoot super strength, and uh, if you get hit with an attack. Sorry, if he hits with attack using an object, it won't penetrate to the target after actually resolve. So again, if if you do get, you know, low level Hulk, you still have come out like a bandit. You've you've added over seventy I mean you added over sixty points to your build. Just just right there. And and also you get an end dial regen. Now, I want you to skip down to, and I, I know this is like looking at your cake and icing uh, before you get to like your main meal, but I want you to look at uh, the Thor number 16. Um, and he doesn't have keywords, and I think that he's probably become, he's, he's going to become one of the new staples of the meta, and here's why. Uh, you give him uh, Noel's hammer, and yes, I know he already has running shot on his first two clicks. But if later on he he doesn't have running shot, and he has this killer range, so that's the one thing. The other thing is giving his starting eleven attack and turning that into a thirteen with the hammer becomes ridiculous. Also, with Noel's hammer, he'll get in Dom, so now you have a willpower Thor. Now, I just, I just want you to take a step back and think about this. You have a will-powered, anti-stealth, 8 range, 2 target, 13 attack, 4 damage monster for 120 points for himself and then how many other points you want to add in with the Book of the Skull. Or later on with the Phoenix Force, the idea of having Cyclops little energy on him or whatever, uh, the potential of him, I think th there's potential of him eventually being Power Cosmic, also with that with Range Combat Expert. Just think about that, let that marinate in you, let that marinate some more, and when it, it becomes done, you're going to start to realize, like, oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. So, uh, this is one character that I feel that is going to really, really start to pop up. And, and, and here's the other thing, when you look at uh, where he can pop at, um, out at. It's on click five. Hold up, nope, hold up, wait. On the same click number as the Thor that he promotes into, which is the less is the common Thor. So if he's on click one, you know he's he's going to be at a pretty good position because he's going to be at the top of the other door, other Thor style game. He'll technically gain. Uh, Two more clicks of life, so that that part is is sort of cool. Uh, the other thing is you you look at it like this: you can't heal him past the starting line, but the pure fact is, as long as you're able to promote that Thor bef uh, before he gets on click five, the latest is click four. 
you'll be able to get that full 200 point Thor to bring in that once you AE and then the the fact that you'll have permanent running shot throughout your whole dial and again you have that killer eight range two targets alright so there's there's some goodness there that can be mined out and and yes you'll have traded willpower and you will also have uh, opposing characters that are within five squares of Thor when he hits an opposing character with a range combat attack have a boot symbol until your next turn so that's that's pretty good added benefit so this is this is pretty much the cake right here the fact that you can get this buff pretty buffed out stat Thor um, into the game if you play your promotions right uh, now with the Book of the Skull and with everything being a lot tamer okay uh, next is uh, Storm and I think that this is the one that if, if there was any case for absurdity this would be it uh, 59 points Storm and Phoenix Force or Hammer or any anything. She was already boss from the beginning. Uh, she 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 was beyond baller. She was MVP. Okay, that's that's how good this storm is. Again, when we have this shrinking of range in the game, and that there are more figures with like a six range and less figures with an eight or ten range, then you're definitely seeing some major like flags throw up like oh shoot we need to look at this we need to look at this we need to look at this so this is one of the the main figures that I feel that we need to look at uh, is this storm and, and a couple people might say well she's awesome she's a stationary cannon why are you thinking about adding anything to her well let's see again a 10 attack her lowest attack with a hammer would be a 10 her starting attack with a hammer would be a 12 with range combat expert and running shot and possibly damage reduction or you know or she can be a giant so that she can you know indefinitely protect uh, some of your characters while being in stealth like that's the cool thing if she's a giant and your opponent has a, like a, a large giant figure or, a, or no I think a colossal too I think it, a, a giant will block line of fire so anybody that's hand that's in the shadow of the of the colossal, it can't be seen. So that's that's the one main reason why we're looking at this giant and running shot stealth combination. Okay. Now you you also can sort of look at Noel's hammer. It's like oh look I got Indomitable, and I do think that's nice. Um, but the the giant tech I feel feel is the best. Now if we look at Storm's promotion. We see we lose a lot, but we gain some mobility. And, and the main reason that, I, again, I'm sort of going back to giant, giant, giant is, yes, we still have running shot, but now we have some other elements that makes people have to look at Storm. And mainly when we're looking at clicks four and five with Storm, which he has close combat expert. And the fact that Storm can treat, you know, characters that are like up to two squares away as if they're adjacent for close combat purposes so now she can hit with close combat expert uh, certain targets that are trying to elude her so that's that's the big thing is that once we add in that giant reach um, we start having some options once we promote so we're, we're thinking like okay how does uh, whatever we're trying to do add in to this promotion whatever our resource dials does whatever our objects do you know how does this tie in and this is the the big element about promotion if the game is moving to this place in which I pop out or I generate characters for free and that gives me a character and point advantage well, then we need to start realizing hmm maybe as a complete train of thought we need to start thinking the same as well and I know promotions icing on the cake but I also think that a lot of these promotions are really easy in the meta that we have now since hyper space age aggro is is about dead okay so we're, we're back into reasonable aggro 
back into, oh, I can I need to actually place my characters, and the game is not over by turn two. Okay, so that's that's the, the big thing. Now, uh, so overall, going back to the storm, I know she, you're like, oh, you know, she's okay, but it's, she has some good elements with the promoted storm. The, the main element that you're most likely going to get out of her is the running shot pulse wave. Um, if you're able to promote early. Also, the fact that she has uh, super senses, and when she has no action token, she has energy shield deflection and can use force blast as a free action. And remember, force blast got, you know, upgraded baller awesome. So just for her to be able to knock back for free is, is pretty good. And I know there might be like a revision on her, so I might need to check that out. And there's nothing listed on a errata. So old school force blast rules, yay. So, those are those are the core. Now, I, I mean, I, I had some people in my conversation say, look at Magneto. Magneto becomes awesome. And I'm like, I still hate that Magneto. That promoted Magneto with a passion. Like, the beginning Magneto, awesome. Promoted Magneto, I hate him. But, I will say this. A hammer helps. A, you know, Phoenix Forest token helps. There's some... Oh my! Oh gosh! Like I, I hurt. Ah, uh, my! I'm stopping myself from saying he has potential. Oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. But again, it's you know he's 250 points, and and to me, that leans a lot of risk on your end. And and you can say like Will Dark Logos, you just said like a couple of minutes ago about Worldbreaker. Well, Worldbreaker can kill people. Like definitely after you promote, you have, you have to look at it like this: you are, you, your your initial team is like the minions, and then your your promotion is like the final boss. Like it, it, that's that's the reality that you're looking at. Like if you go through a level of the game and you beat some like little weenies up, and then then at the end of the level, it's like a weenie that takes a whole lot of steroids and drugs at, in front of you, and then he, like, morphs into some monster. Sort of like the Joker at the end of uh, Arkham Asylum. Oh, well, I should have said spoiler, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. If, if you haven't played it, too bad. I'm sorry. Just too bad for you. Dark Loco, spoiling your days for games that came out over five years ago. All right, so going back, um, we we see some some key things with uh, with these promotions. Is oh I forgot uh, Iron Man. Iron Man, how can I forget Iron Man? Now now here's where I stand on Iron Man. Iron Man is not a great promotion in 300, and here's why. You're most likely going to get the second half of Iron Man's dial. So you're you're only gaining like twenty four points of advantage, and unless you really need to, to negate like relics and resources, it's, it's not worth it. Um, the other element is, you know, once you give the like the the standard uh, Iron Man a hammer, he's pretty solid, but his cost is what's holding him back. A lot of the other promotions that we looked at. They're really low. And you can say, well, Magneto's more expensive. Yes, but you get something exponentially more expensive than Magneto. And with Iron Man, you can get a exponentially more expensive Iron Man. And that Iron Man is awesome. But the chances of you doing that, I feel, is slim. Um, I just don't see this Iron Man, the the the, the non-promoted Iron Man, really assisting as strong as another as other promotions. Okay, so I I, I hate to have that be like the tail end of looking at at Marvel Tenth. And again, you feel free to disagree. And I know like a hammer will give him you know a charge option or a running shot option or this, that, or the other option. I'm fully aware of that, and, and I'm not going to disagree. Where my main concern is, is that as the dial progresses, his ability to promote goes down like a rock. Unlike the other ones I mentioned that are pretty stable. Like, even 
I hate to say it like this, even Magneto's pretty stable. Um, you know, he's always able to do something. Yeah, he's always able to do something from Pulse Wave to Outwit and Quake. Yeah, he's he's always able to do something. And the other cool thing is it's like with Hit, um you I I need to find out the ruling on Force Blast. Because technically you can hit a character with Force Blast. So does that count for promotion? So feel free to ask that of the rules arms because I would like to find out. Um I mean, just straight Force Blast, not Force Blast with an attack. Just straight, you know, boom, knock you back, Force Blast. So, I mean, that's... And also, hey, if you don't knock him back, does it still hit? Because if so, I mean, that, that says something. So, anyway, um, those those are the main ones to consider. I know, like, oh, Emma Frost and, you know, Marvel Girl and, and blah, you know. Whatever. I'm I'm not a fan of the Marvel Girl, even if she did get a hammer. It's it's too much. All right, so let's go look at DC Ten. Okay, now DC Ten, uh, to me, is is it brings in a different element when you start looking at the hammers because you're starting to see. I'm paying a lot more, but oh my gosh, I'm doing some ridiculous stuff. I'm pay and, and see the the Marvel stuff is like I'm cheap and then I become broken because I have a hammer plus a promotion so it just multiplies everything exponentially. But when you look at DC, it's like I'm I'm sort of costly, but when you give me a hammer or you give me a Phoenix Force or you give me an object or you give me anything, I become a lot crazier. I, I, I just just my base version is silly. Then I, I can morph into something that's completely different. And so I'm going to bring up some figures that we have not looked at in a serious light in a while and some that we have. Okay. So the first character up, of course, is Batman. Now, why is Batman the first character I'm looking at? Well, he's 63 points. He has a six range. It's okay range. But here's where it starts to become dumb. What is the weaknesses of Batman? No damage reduction. Okay. And uh, no, uh, what is it? No running shot. He's, he's a very sort of post up and shoot Batman. You know, he, he requires in most cases some form of, uh, I hate to say a TK, or you're trying to uh, put another character out so that uh, he can be carried and fl flown into position so he can outwit or he'll move one turn and then shoot the next. He's, he's never in the same turn just causing havoc. And that is why he needs a hammer. That is why he needs a hammer. Now, again, is, is a hammer the, the fix-all everything? No, but what, what is a, a hammer going to give us? We have a couple options. We have a uh, we have Mox Hammer. That's going to give us plasticity, running shot, and uh, let's see. I know. I thought one of them gave him. Yeah, well, Gray Off sort of helps, but it doesn't really help the way that I want it to help. Um, Necrods can give you Dolphin Symbol, but I, I don't see Necrods being top tier meta right now. Um, dum, dum, dum. Okay, so anyway, we have some options. So if we feel that what we're going up against is is going to be like one of those like slugfest, then Angrier's Hammer, like straight up. And and here's why: with Angrier's Hammer, we are getting charge, still energy, uh, and we are also getting toughness, which is what he needs. He needs damage reduction. But, oh, what's this I hear? If we use charge, we can combine that with incapacitate now. Oh, so if I charge and incapacitate, I could lock them down. And then uh, possibly, you know, later on when I need to get away, use leap climb. And if I've taken too much damage, I can regen or try to charge normally and use steel energy. 
oh my goodness, Batman becomes awesome broken. Now, he is so easy to just get his stats, I mean, to get his promotion tokens. Because his 12 attack turns into a 14. So it's an auto hit. It's, it's just straight auto hit. And I, and I know, like, some people were like, well, the game just got balanced, Dark Logo, so you're breaking the game again. It's, it's, I, I am not a fan of the crazy stat mods that we have. And I'm starting to feel that we need a new stat modification rule, which would be rule of rule of three. And rule of three is you can only modify any of you only can have three modifications at any point in time. So you can modify your attack by plus one, your damage by plus one, uh, and your defense by plus one. But you couldn't have like attack by plus two and damage modified by plus three. Like, I think we need a new rule of three. But it's just the fact that the damage output that most of these characters do is ridiculous, and the dial length is ridiculous. It just is. So, now, we look at the promotion into Chase Batman, and Chase Batman is not giving us a ton of point advantage. Okay? But what is Chase Batman giving us? All right? Uh, we are getting empowered by deception when an opposing character within four squares rolls uh, a one or two for shape change. You may heal Batman. That's very situational, so we can't depend on that. What's next? Rise. Batman can use stealth and stealth and leap climb. So we haven't really lost anything yet. If we're still in those first three clicks, then Reign of Black Rings. Now I think this is where the silliness starts. Batman can use Pulse Wave as if he had a range value of eight. When he does, friendly characters that share a keyword with Batman reduce this damage dealt to them to zero. So now we have Batman with running shot. If we have running shot, uh, take a running shot hammer. Uh, that is Indom. That now can do running shot pulse wave with a three range. So, I mean, like, like he has a range of eight, sorry. So he has like a four range pulse wave. So that could be good if our in game promotion is we really need to start, you know, knocking down this dude and he has a ton of, of damage reduction. Or or mystics, one of the two. Now the the one thing about this Batman is are you mostly going to promote to him? Not really. Okay. Not not really too many times. But he he and this is why I'm saying like they morph and they turn into something else. I mean, sorry, they promote and they turn to something else because morph is a proper turn. And so you would, you would only promote Batman if you need that something else. All right. Let's look at another character that I know that you haven't thought about at all. Um, and, I, and I know when I bring this up, I'm going to get the, you know, the lo dark logos you on that stuff, man, is John Jones. John Jones. And, and here's why. What's John Jones' biggest weakness? He has no moving attack starting off. What does John Jones have? Super strength and super senses and perplex. What in NPDTA? What does John Jones really sort of been up until this point? A very glorified police officer. And after Streets of Gotham, he definitely sort of like lost his place. He's he's not really a brick. He, he's a, a taxi if you sort of need it, and he carries an object, and you have to move him up and then hope one of two things happen. Either A, your opponent doesn't knock you past charge, or B, that you don't have to try to push on to charge, and then your opponent kill you. Am I, am I right? You know I'm right. So, what's, what's the big thing that we're looking at? Okay, so, again, back to Angrier's Hammer, or, or better yet, Let's let's look at something that would be a little bit more thematic. Let's go with uh, Curse Hammer. Curse Hammer. Uh, the fact that you will get uh, the character gets charged, improved movement, ignores blocking terrain, and destroys blocking terrain as if the character uh, as the character moves through it. Uh, improved movement ignores Henry terrain and toughness. Uh, this character modifies his attack by plus two. Now, so we get charge, we get toughness, and we are able to. Uh, get our plus two stats and ignore blocking terrain, which is a little bit more thematic for Martian Manhunter, aka John Jones. Now, now this is where it gets silly. Now you might say, like, well, Angrier's Hammer would be better, and and yeah, Angrier's Hammer is broken. It's it's good on on everybody that's like a melee figure. Uh, here's the other cool thing: 
we could also sort of use that range um, a running shot giant hammer and I need to I need to say like the proper names so that people stop saying you know people, well Grayoth's Grayoth's hammer um, you could use Grayoth's hammer and it it would allow you certain silliness again that just just copy and paste stealth shenanigans you know with John Jones that I you did from Storm okay the other element is is that with him being giant. And if you play any old school games with um, uh, feats, he's like the best brilliant tactician ever with uh, Grayoth's hammer because he can see everybody on the field when he initiates perplex. So he can perplex down your enemy and then initiate perplex on your whole team. So that's where he becomes ridiculously broke strong, you know. And so anyway, going on. Uh, so when we look at his promotion to Martian Manhunter. Uh, the the first thing that we're going to notice is what is what is Martian Manhunter? Martian Manhunter is this weird. I, I you almost feel as a less viable character, and I think that's why a lot of people didn't play him. Um, and and, it, and his points are ridiculously high. They're they're so high. Um, you're 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 going from your 90 points and gaining 80 more points at that 170 point range. You still have that perplex starting off. You still have that super strength, but you get uh, Martian Martian physiology. Martian, Martian Manhunter uh, can use stealth and charge. When Martian Manhunter uses charge, he can ignore blocking terrain as he moves. Well. That you know you still have the option to break it down. So if you go into the running shot mode. Um, you couldn't like run a shot and break through walls, but you can always charge and break through walls, and that's why Curse Hammer is pretty much the best. Um, if you do use the Gray Ops Hammer, then yes, this allows you some flexibility. Then uh, I can see the attack in your mind. Martian Manhunter can use Super Senses. So the fact that we can stack Impervious and Super Senses is pretty cool. Now, where I, I, I start looking at Martian Manhunter, it's like, ugh. I like you, but you do something completely different. Why do I like you? I, I like you because I can still sort of keep that charge pressure up if I want to, that I've been rocking the whole entire game because I have super strength. And I can pick up these objects and bust people. It's that click three, four, and five transition that I get scared with Martian Manhunter because all of a sudden he turns into, hello everyone, I am now a range piece. And at six range, it's sort of tough. And yes, he still has PD and Justice League TA, and and that's all good and dandy. Uh, so the the issue with his with this promotion is knowing if you're going to promote on clicks three, four, and five, understand you're running a completely different offense. Now, clicks seven and eight on Martian Manhunter with a hammer or with Phoenix Force or whatever else can be ridiculously awesome. And here's why plus stats and hypersonic speed and super strength and three base damage that's not bad it's just not bad so Martian Man and Martian Manhunter are, are you more inclined to play him probably not are you more inclined to play John Jones knowing that Martian Manhunter is an option probably so Again, something to marinate in your brain and something for you to think about. You know, is this worth it? Okay, and now now I will also add this. With with new meta mind control, if you just start sitting back and saying, I got a 10, oh, let's see, go back. I have a 13 to at lowest 11 attack. I, I'll, I'll mind control some dudes. I, I have no problems doing that. So... Anyway, Martian Manhunter, ladies and gentlemen, Martian Manhunter. You can now exit the stage. All right, now, there, there's one character I wish I could sort of, like, polish up and then be like, oh, yes, he becomes awesome. And that's Lex Luthor, but, and, and that's the one that you promote um, into awesome Lex Luthor. But, sadly, he's going to perpetually stay crappy. Um... I had hopes that there would be something eventually at one point in time that would make him broke strong and that he would surprise me and become awesome and then I would eat my words and then I would play that 
that starter Lex and then it metamorph him into my armor is going to kill you Lex. I, it, but it's so hard with the 10 attack and 2 damage and even with the 12 damage. It's, I mean, 12 attack, it's, it's just so hard. Uh, so I, I, I can't play him. I, every time I think about playing him, my body says, oh, oh, I have like physical revulsion. Um, even though I keep thinking like, oh man, there's going to be some lamp goodness and it's, it doesn't happen. So. All right. Uh, next up, and and I I I'm gonna talk about Green Lantern just briefly because I already talked about him to an extent in the beginning. Is really cool. The really cool thing is about Green Lantern, Alan Scott, is that he is probably by far one of the he he comes back after the craziness that was Team Bases. He comes back and says to the meta, "Oh oh son, your your grandpappy's back, and I brought the whooping stick." Okay. And he schools a lot of figures. And, and the one thing that I look at with him having a hammer or a Phoenix Force or any of that jazz is he gets damage reduction. And, and you can even say, oh, look, full dial, uh, running shot. Screw that. Give him a charge hammer. Get him some damage reduction. Allow him to, you know, give him curse hammer and freaking watch people crap their pants because here's why you put him behind some walls or they think they're going to barrier him up like oh like he won't be able to do anything curse hammer son bust through all those walls and now you have damage reduction um and and yeah it's like oh i have charge eh, what, okay whatever you have charge now the the best thing is he, he already starts with 11 attack so giving him like a 13 attack is back into auto hit land. And as much as I'm not a fan of that, it's stupid. It's <laughs> stupid strong. Okay. <laughs> but again, he's he's already expensive. He's he's in that 90 point range. Now when we when we promote into how you can even hear my voice when I say that. We lose so much just to gain that construct ability, okay? But if, if you really know that you're going to monopolize that construct ability, then go ahead and, and look at Alan Scott to promote to how. But nine times out of ten, I'm sorry, like this, it's not going to happen. Even with how having a 12 attack at the beginning or even going on having 11s. And I'm, I'm just, mm, there's so many better hows. There's no reason to ever play this how on his own and the promotion is the only reason to play this how and, and so I, I I feel that there is stuff to be looked at here there's there's a lot of stuff to be looked at here but again if your team is able to exploit it and I know some people might say but but Dark Logos the new energy explosion yeah with one target but Dark Logos he has Green Lantern TA and you can carry 50 dudes. It, yeah, you would already have to have that set up from the jump. And it, and by the time you get that enhancement battery together, you've already used it as a stationary count cannon with Allen. So it, it, it becomes frustrating. It, it just becomes frustrating. But you're really just banking on uh, using the, the excuse me, using the construct. Now, Here's where it also can be interesting. With the new in power, with the new in power, he can start hitting like a brick using that construct ability. So think about that. So, all right, moving on. Now, I'm going to bring up Catwoman just for the pure fact that the, the start of Catwoman is 35 points. And so, if you're able to get enough to promote, I'm yeah, and, and you're and, and you're gonna be like, well, I have hammers and I have all the other stuff floating around that sort of hoses me. I I would say upgrade with grand caution, with grand caution. But getting a bunch more points, upgrading to uh, the experienced Catwoman, getting thirty more points, 
33 points. That is... You gain a lot on top of the wild card. So look at old school Catwoman. The I really do think that she has potential. I just think that the your biggest problem with with her is that if you're running any sort of relic or resource on on your team, you're going to have a major problem. Um, even though she she benefits from. Curse Hammer or Grey Ops Hammer. Really, she benefits just from a ton of different stuff. Uh, so, again, like you can start seeing where I'm coming from with that DC 10. Is that it's like, oh, there's some cool stuff on the base guy. The promotion. Ugh. You know. Like, oh, What happened? You know, there's, there's problems here. So, here's, here's an example of fun. And I'm not necessarily saying this is even worth considering. You have the Flash, old school JSA Flash, okay? And he doesn't benefit, he, he benefits minorly from a hammer. He just needs damage reduction so he doesn't die. But he's going to run all around the map. Are, are most figures able to catch him? No. Um, even in, in current meta, most figures can't really catch him. Um, it, definitely if there's walls. Now, would it allow him to upgrade into... You know, Barry Flash, yes. Do you gain a lot? Not really. Just, just not really. So, yes, now you have damage reduction. I have toughness. But old school Flash just beats new Flash in a bunch of different ways. So, I know you're going to say, like, oh, perplex and... Oh, he can get charged flurry, and he can use exploit weakness. It's like I, I don't care about that. I'm giving up hypersonic so I can charge flurry. Okay, cool. That makes mm, no, no. I'm stay with old flash. So back to things that actually you know can make us a little bit happy. Let's look at Brainiac um, number 005. This Brainiac has several problems. Problem number one, he has no Indom. That's problem number one. Problem number two is he only has one click of running shot and three clicks of pulse wave. Okay. The the next problem that we're we're dealing with him is his stats fall off like like our oh gosh, they just fall so bad. They they, they slope downward quickly. Okay. So because they slope downward so quickly there's a lot to consider about like how are you going to play him so because of all of these things we are left to resort to using a hammer and I know it's like uh, whatever hammers uh, I'm tired of hearing hammers but bear with me just bear with me I'm, I'm trying to show you all this with a 13 attack starting off again we're in auto hit land again alright so we can give him Noel's hammer now we have in Dom. Oh, okay. And so we just do our running shot shenanigans and we keep blasting and blasting, blasting. Um, we need to get a result of 10 or higher. So that means that we can start replacing once we've landed at minimum four attacks. Okay. We can start uh, replacing on the same click number, which becomes really important when we look at Brainiac. Now, you can say, like, oh, we can do eight, and then we can go into rookie crapness, and that's dumb. That's, yeah, that's dumb. We want we want top dial, fully awesome, click one or two Brainiac. That's, that's what we want. We don't want anything less than that. All right, so how are we we're going to be utilizing this? He's at 160. He's already expensive. So I have to say this is a beyond 300-point meta thought, okay? The next thing is with him, we're we're primarily looking at a setup where he's the tent pole, and you have a whole lot of little guys, and your main goal for your little guys is to buy time. So to an extent, you are stalling, but you're not stalling, stalling. You're just slowing the tempo down so that you can promote. If you are able to promote into broke brainiac, congratulations, you win, because. If you add in running shot to broke brainiac, 
he doesn't always have to get into melee to do exploit. Also, he has a couple of clicks of pulse wave here and there, which is, you know, pretty cool. But just thinking about the fact that you can, instead of getting, you know, right next to somebody and using a double power action, you can just run it shot. So, that's, that's, that's the big deal. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, okay, I'm going to invest all that time just so that I can turn into a 350-point Brainiac. Yes, you are. Well, what if they have the Infinity Gauntlet? Well, it's going to be a slower game. I mean, sorry, better. it's not going to be a slower game. You, you better rush down that person with the Infinity Gauntlet. And then if you're still in trouble, then slow your tempo down and try to heal your, your Brainiac back up. Okay, that's that's where you're going with it. Uh, just being honest, all right. Now, now we're 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 moving around a bit, and I'm going to to present something to you, and then I know a lot of you all are gonna be like, Ugh, I don't really like that. Ugh, the medicine tastes nasty. <sighs> Blue Beetle does not work with this philosophy that we're going with. And, and you're like, oh, I, I want to use my Blue Beetle so I can hit a bazillion people with energy explosion, Dark Logos. <laughs> but, but, but really, Blue Beetle doesn't work really well. And, and here's why. When we look at Ted Core Blue Beetle, yes, we'll get running shot, and yes, we'll get energy explosion, and all that good jazz. But the moment someone sees that we have a running shot hammer on Blue Beetle, they are going to spread out. And if they haven't spread out already, then their their whole offense is relying on a formation. Okay, the next issue is after Blue Beetle lands that first attack, his dial is too short. It's way, it's way too short. He's going to get killed next turn. After If he gets the energy explosion off, he's dead next turn. He, he won't get a chance to promote. And the fact that, let's see, his requirement is an 8 or higher. He has to land at least two attacks and get lucky with a 6. So, I, I don't, I'm not feeling that. Okay. And then also when we look at, you know, uh, Jamie Rise or Reyes, or Reyes. Um, when you look at him as Blue Beetle, uh, the, the the big problem comes in is that, yes, you can keep continuous running shot, and, and that's really cool, but by the time that you promote up to him, his ability as a cleaner really isn't there. Now, if you're looking at him as one okay secondary attacker that sort of comes in and plinks, that goes into a more offensive, more damaging second attacker, secondary attacker. Then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But if you're looking for him to be a cleaner, that doesn't work. Okay, and then again, I'm not trying to force all these promotions to be in-game cleaners. But unfortunately, that's the way they they try to design them. That they're all set up to be in-game cleaners or part of your force if you just want to straight up pay for them. Uh, it's sort of like watching Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid and you watch Yu-Gi-Oh and then you know Yu-Gi-Oh plays that monster and that monster is a punk but if it survives three turns it metamorphosized into broke guy and broke guy can destroy all trap cards and is immune to magic spells and does you know over one million damage that's that's pretty much what it is so does does Jamie Rise Blue Beetle benefit massively from uh, a hammer or from the Phoenix Force, maybe only Cyclopses, and considering he only has Mystics, he doesn't really benefit from additional Mystics. You can't really stack Mystics. So, that really leaves us sort of sitting back, I wouldn't say twiddling our thumbs, but it puts us in a very awkward position where, where we're stuck, stuck asking ourselves, is this really worth it? And I would say not really. Um, the 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 king of the hill, the the last well not the last the last one from this set that we're going to look at is the the one figure 
that I was a big fan of when he came out, and I haven't been able to play him as much um, since a lot of the meta changes, and I understand now that he's going to come out of retirement. And that is Superman from this set. Hyper Time. KC Superman. Now, and, and I know, I know, it's like, yes, he's strong. You know, he's very expensive. Uh, yes, we already get the trend. He's going to promote into, you know, Blackest Night Superman. But why are we really looking at him? He starts with 12 attack. He starts with 12 attack. So because he starts with 12 attack and that we're looking at any modification from that point on is going to make him a 14 and that's pretty ridiculous so he him promoting is not a question of if it's a question of when it's not a question of if it's a question of when okay the next thing that comes in uh, into play is the fact that yes he starts off with charge so we're going to give him a running shot hammer. And this fixes 90% of his problems, his nulls hammer. Running shot and willpower fixes everything wrong with him. Now, if you want to go into Phoenix Force, yes, again, Cyclops, range combat expert. So now he still has that 12 attack, but he will do range combat expert with 6 damage. And I also think he will do poison. So that's some added bonus. Okay, so if he does get based, he still has some potential. Now, here's, here's the, the key thing that I want you all to understand. The fact that the moment that we are able to give him a running shot ability, capability, is the moment that most of his risk factors as a piece goes out the window. You don't have to push him anymore. That's, that's the thing. You don't have to push him anymore because the whole key before was push him to hypersonic speed and then he runs around and he acts like a typical hypersonic speed speed piece. No, forget that. Just just get that out your mind. In that thought right now. No, no, no more pushing him to hypersonic speed. You are getting him Null's hammer. You are putting him out there and he is going to kill people. That's all he's going to do. He's going to run around. He's going to kill people. Running shot. Okay. Now, you're going to say, well, Dark Logos, if he's this baller and this awesome, he's he is the, the league MVP level sort of a player. Why are we promoting him to Superman? And Superman is not like that. I mean, to, to Blackest Night Superman. Okay. Now, here's why. Here's why we're promoting the Blackest Night Superman. Okay, first off, we'll still have that running shot hammer with Null's hammer, okay? But we have Indomitable. So th if we want to swap hammers or, or swap, you know, anything else out, we can, okay? So that's, that's, that's some leverage that we do have, all right? The next sort of cool advantage that we get by playing Blackest Night Superman is if we need to go back into melee, we can. And you're going to say, like, well, we had hypersonic speed before. You know, why are we going to give up hypersonic speed for charge and periodic hypersonic speed? Okay, okay, I can understand that. I can understand that. Okay, the, the, the real issue is, is that we're coming in and we're able to have those plus stats, so we're able to land close combat expert attacks off really well. Um, the next major advantage that we're, we're looking at is having that running shot hammer allows us to actually use our psychic blast so if we do need penetrating damage on clicks 4 and 5 we have it. Again it's optional and then that's what I'm saying this whole theme with the DC 10 set promotions they're all optional. They're not necessarily mandatory or like oh my gosh I'm really getting a whole lot like the Marvel ones. The DC ones are like, yeah, okay. Cool. I got I got something. All right. So that's the other major advantage. Now, this is the big thing. It's the fact that you fight me as if I live. Superman uses regeneration and toughness. This power can't be countered. 
Now, this is where it gets silly because you have the option later on in the game, if you're able to float enough hammers, to add in uh, the, what is it? Uh, the Angrier's Hammer. Because Angrier just says, hey, guess what? I have permanent steel energy and permanent regen. So, <clears throat> if you're able to add a second hammer, just drop Angrier's Hammer on him, and then he doesn't die. Just, just being honest, he doesn't die. Because you'll charge steel energy, heal. You'll regen, heal. Um, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. You're it, in a, in like, let's say a thousand point game. If you played this shenanigan, I, I don't think a lot of people would notice how how broke this would be until like the last few minutes of the game. Is the fact that you've put in all this damage to try to kill Superman, and he just comes back, and it's like, man, I regen, man, I steal energy, man, I steal energy. Oh, I'm top dial. So. Um, that's that's a, a big deal. Um, that's a real big deal. Now, I will say, if you're looking for some bargain bin, you know, this is pretty cool uh, stuff. You can look at Wonder Woman. And again, I, I do say bargain bin. If, if you decide, like, oh, I don't really want to do some of this other stuff, and you need, like, just a brick, I mean, she's good. Um, I, I don't think her survivability is there. But have, making sure that she has full dial charge is awesome. And then when she promotes him to Blackest Night Wonder Woman, it, that's an upgrade. That's a massive upgrade for her. But that's, that. again, the problem is the starting point. The problem is ugh, that the base Wonder Woman. Now, there is a promotion within the Iron Man 3 set, and that's Tony Stark. He He's dumb strong. He's dumb strong as it is. He's he's like I don't know my own strength and strong. He's he's that fifth grader that looks like he belongs in high school because because puberty hit him a year early, and yeah, that's that's what you're looking at. Okay, he has so many elements that make you come back and think like, oh, just maybe, just maybe I I I have to do this, or maybe just maybe I have to do this other thing. Now, the one thing I will look at him when we're looking at our Silly Hammer tech, or our Phoenix Force tech, uh, is the following. If he has Range Combat Expert, he's stupid. He's stupid. Range Combat Expert and Poison, those are two things he should never have that, that you can give to him. Okay. And all of a sudden, his damage output goes from okay to crazy stupid never should be possible for a low point character to do that much damage okay the next thing that becomes interesting with uh, Tony Stark is that with uh, hammers he'll have a 12 attack and he can start getting running shot off uh, running shots off or if you decide to use the charge function he'll have damage reduction for his whole dial not just at the beginning I mean, at the end. So that's that's an added bonus. His dial is short, but it's ooh, it's it's sort of sort of rough to try to protect him. But if you can, when he promotes, he promotes into, and this is the fun part, people. Um, on a result of an 8, you may replace this character with any character with this trait in a point value of 75 points or less. Uh, the same number of clicks uh, from its starting uh, line. So what's sort of cool is this upcoming Iron Man set. We could probably see some things that he would promote into. So that's, that's sort of cool. Um, because if we get some cheap Iron Man's, um, that would be good. But we also see that he can promote into, I think it's Mark, is it Mark 7? Yeah, he can, he can promote into Mark 7. Okay, so when he promotes into Mark 7, he, his trait says upgraded armor. Modify Mark 7 speed and attack values by plus 1. So he has a 10. Oh, but we have a hammer, so that means that he has a 12. 
okay? Uh, I was about to say 13 for a moment, then I was like, brain does not compute. Okay, so now you have running shot with, I mean, you have charge based on your, your armor, I mean, based on your dial, but then you also have running shot because of the hammer. You have running shot in Dom. You have a 12 attack. You have 4 damage for 75 points. Welcome to Brokeville. I am your mayor, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. Now, no, I, I mean, you're like, oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. I can't believe they didn't see that. And, and trust me, it it's something that we weren't even looking at until everything toned back down. Literally, it wasn't something until everything toned back down. Because it wasn't viable. Now it's viable, and now we need to start thinking about what's the new boogeyman. We have, we have killed the old demon. We, we found out the boogeyman does not lie in the closet at night, but we're unsure about under the bed. So that's, that's what's up. Okay, uh, if you find any other interesting promotions, let me know. Um, and uh, tell me if it is worth looking at. I might update the blog or do something. The blog is coming back. I don't know when yet. It's just I'm exhausted and the only thing I can do after work is just sit and play uh, League of Legends or uh, what is it? Might and Magic Duel of Champions. And even that's sort of pushing it some days. So uh, so anyway, uh, let me know what's up. Uh, what's, what's thinking, what's popping, what's going on. Uh, what's what's interesting to you? How did your last month of Fear Itself go? Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend any of the three in the Kansas City area because I am working. Uh, <laughs> the one that was this evening, uh, I couldn't go to because A, I passed out sleep, and B, I have a check, but I had to physically deposit it, <laughs> and I just didn't have the money to play. So, you know, you got to pay to play, and without that, you can't play. Uh, anyway, uh, how did it go? Did you win? Did you lose? How did you know? How much was the Book of the Skull really affecting your games? Uh, also, with all the spoilers that's come out about the Avengers versus X Men, are you excited? Are you sad? Are you 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 you're glad to be in the new event that's coming, or do you still feel it's a money grab? Uh, give me your thoughts. Uh, let me know uh, at Starting over podcast at gmail.com. That's starting over podcast at gmail.com. Send it there if you wish to opine. Keep it pithy. Keep it interesting. Uh, keep it light sometimes. Keep it heavy if you really need to. Okay? And uh, if you want to know when the new show is out, you can hit the subscribe button. Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but if you really want to know when a new show is out, as soon as it's popping fresh, follow me on Twitter. That's at StartOverPod. That's at StartOverPod. It came from outer space, gave me a drink of moon juice, and told me it was syrup. All right. And uh, last but not least... If you ever want to donate, you can go over uh, to the blog at startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com. If you wish to donate to the show, if you have codes that you want to donate to the show that I can give away on Twitter or on the show, um, then just email me uh, and let me know, and I will throw those out there uh, as in addition to a shout-out uh, to you on the show. So you get a shout-out on the show, and uh, you also... Uh, get to help someone have fun in HCO. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I might be trying to get some guests here in a little bit, see what they are thinking about the new meta. And uh, I know I spent the entire show talking about promotions, and I know it's like, ah, promotions. Good to think about, but what about this other stuff? So, I, I, I'm telling you, next time, I'm going to move on, and we're going to talk about something else, okay? What that is all depends on what happens between now and the next recording. <laughs> all right. Oh, last thing to let you know. Um, some exciting things are coming. I can't say just yet, but you may be hearing me on a, in another place that you wouldn't have thought you would be hearing me supporting something that you would never thought you would hear me support. So, 
be on the lookout for that. If everything gets finalized in the next few weeks, uh, you could possibly be seeing something interesting before the end of the year. So, who knows? Stuff is being worked on. Stuff is being worked on. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate all of you all. And remember, we all have to start over sometime. I'm into comic books, figures on the wall. She's into looking good. Vicky C's got a law. And she loves my flaws. Yeah, yeah, she's not ashamed. I'm a Peter Parker. She's my Mary Jane. 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 I'm a Peter Parker. She's my Mary Jane. I'm a big nerd around her. But she's cool around me Never knew how she found me Electric, but she grounds me And she loves my flaws She accepts them all When the darkness comes I will get the call I will swing down, swing down the city